Well, hi there, and welcome once again to In Search of Christianity, brought to you by Bible Talk. And once again, I want to greet you in the wonderful, precious oh, name of yeah. our Lord and Savior, Jesus yes. Christ. Yes. On behalf of Alice, Mark, and myself, and everybody involved with Bible Talk. Amen. We are so blessed to have this opportunity to share God's Word with you. Yes. As we continue on, we're looking at, this is, uh, I think, our, our sixth or seventh week, looking at what the well-dressed Christian should wear, talking about, well, more than, but specifically about the whole armor of God. Yes. So that's what we're going to do. Now we're going to pick it up there. And by the way, I just thought I'd mention, yes. this is our 101st program mm -hmm. in the In Search of Christianity program. Um, once a week for 101 weeks. weeks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Two years. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, we have all the other Bible studies we've done prior to that that are all still up on the Bible Talk webpage. Yeah. Uh, but we, we hope that these are blessing you. And you can always contact us. We appreciate your comments, your, your suggestions, your questions. Write to us at office at BibleTalk.com or visit us on Facebook at Facebook.com in search of Christianity. So we're going to start now after Mark. Yes, God's blessing on our time oh, together. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, Lord, we rejoice with your word. Lord. Yes. Just we are thankful for it, mm -hmm. and we're thankful for everything that you gave us, Lord. And just have it revealed to us and let us understand it more and more. Amen. 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 Thank Amen. you. Amen. Give us understanding, Lord. Yes. More and more. All right. Um, we're, we're at the end of the whole armor of God. Right. We, uh, we're in, and we will be in again today, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17, as we ended last week, mm -hmm. when we talked about this, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. So this program, we'll be talking about the sword of the Spirit. But I want to say that in our last study, in our mm -hmm. last program, we, we left off with this. God spoke to the prophet Isaiah saying, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Hallelujah. Isaiah 55, that's verses 8 and 9. So the renewed, the transformed mind has to be, is being conditioned to think his thoughts and to fill his mind, our minds with his word, all right? Yes. Because we are, we are, mm -hmm. I tell you, mm -hmm. destroying speculations and every lofty thing mm -hmm. raised up against the knowledge of God, and we are taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ, as Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Yes. We are being brainwashed. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Jesus. Not brain dirty, yeah. not brain corrupted like the world. We're being brainwashed. See, I say that what fills your mind will fill your heart, and what fills your heart will fill your mouth. Just as Jesus said, for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And what fills your mouth had better be the word of God. Peter wrote and said this in 1 Peter 4.11, Whoever speaks, and he's talking to the saints of God, mm -hmm. whoever speaks is to do so as one who is speaking the utterances of God. Whoever serves is to do as so as one who is serving by the strength which God supplies, so that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belongs the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. If we are speaking our own words, God's not being God. glorified. Not at all. God is glorified when we are speaking his word, when it is his word that out of the abundance of our heart is coming out of our mouth, right? The sword of the spirit is the word of God. So we are cautioned by James to be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. James 1.19, rather. So that we may imitate our Lord Jesus Christ. Because he said in John chapter 12, for I did not speak on my own initiative, but the Father himself who sent me has given me a commandment as to what to say and what to speak. 
I know that his commandment is eternal life. Therefore, the things I speak, I speak just as the Father has told me. Write this down. By the way, I've said before, it's really good if you have a little piece of paper and something to write with. Jot things down. I, I've said this, I'll say it one more time. Don't trust me. Test me. Examine all things and hold fast that which is good. If, if I say something and you don't recognize it, write, it write that, write it down. And go Check look it for out. it. Mm -hmm. Check it out. If you write, if you if something strikes you, if it's the Spirit of God quickens something to your heart, write it down so you can go meditate on it and spend time with the Lord about yeah. it. Yes. If you have that pencil and paper, write this down. There is power in words. Amen. <clears throat> words have. Power. power. Absolutely. Absolutely. In the beginning. That's a good place. Mm. Bere Bereshith. In the beginning. God created. Yes. Spoken. That's it. That's history, by the way. All right. God created with a word. Mm -hmm. He said, let there be light. And boom, there was light. Amen. Right? Yes. It was all about what he said. It was all about his word. It all came by the word, right? Yes. I know that to be the truth. You know why? Because the Bible yes. tells me so. That's right. John chapter 1, starting at verse 1, says this. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and apart from him, nothing came into being that has come into being. If it exists, it's because God spoke it into existence. This is all about, that's all about Jesus, the word made flesh who dwelt among us. Now, that's how God started. Let me tell you how the adversary started, right? The very first attack by the adversary, the enemy, the serpent of old, who comes to steal, kill, and destroy, was to challenge the word. Yes. He said to the woman, indeed, has God said, Genesis 3, 1, did God really say this? Mm. Oh, maybe. Did he really mean it? Mm. He's, slander. he's calling the word of God into question. Yes. Okay. He is trying to remove the power and import of the word in our lives. Satan wants to disarm us. No, let me change that. Satan desperately wants to disarm us. He really does. To take away what he, what he fears in us. Yes. So many Christians are running around afraid of the devil. You know, every time Jesus encountered a demon-possessed person, the demon was afraid of Jesus. And Jesus was never afraid it. of the demon. Did you ever notice that in the scripture? I pray you did, all right? Yes. God's word revealed and taught to us by God's spirit who has sent us, to, who was sent to lead us into all truth. Mm -hmm. That's what we have in us. God's word and God's spirit that Satan is afraid of. The nations, the world out there, think about this, spends billions and, and billions and billions of dollars to develop and make weapons. The more powerful and capable of death, the better. Is that all right? Mm -hmm. If you haven't heard that, take a look in your newspaper, wherever you are, whatever day it is, take a look and you'll see that. Satan does not fear. This is important. Mm -hmm. Satan does not fear weapons of mass destruction. He absolutely delights mm -hmm. in weapons of mass destruction. Mm -hmm. What he fears is the word of eternal life. Amen. Amen. I mean, think about that. It's so logical when you think about it. What Satan fears is the words of eternal life, the word of God. Because he knows the, the power. Right. Natural weapons, he fears not any natural weapon. So why are Christians so involved with weapons, with natural weapons mm -hmm. in so many places? Yes. Okay. Yes. I mean, hey, it's, that's, listen, it's between you and God. I'm just, I'm just tossing think it out for your it. consideration. Yeah. yeah, think about it. All right. Satan fears the truth mm -hmm. simply because Jesus is the truth. Right. So let's go. This is in the beginning, right? Mm -hmm. In the beginning, that was the acts of God. In the beginning, that was the acts of Satan. Now let's go to 
the end. Okay. So we're going to cover the entire Bible here in just a couple of minutes, right? In the book of Revelation, in the 19th chapter, starting in verse 11, John, the revelator on the island of the Patmos, he said, And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on it is called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he judges and wages war. His eyes are a flame of fire, and on his head are many diadems, and he has a name written on him which no one knows except himself. He is clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which are in heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, were following him on white horses. From his mouth comes a sharp sword, so that with it he may strike down the nations, and he will rule them with a rod of iron, and he treads the winepress of the fierce wrath of God the Almighty. Satan certainly should fear the word of God. Amen. Oh, mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. Okay, Hallelujah. sing it, brothers and sisters. <laughs> he, he is a very, yeah, I don't know if you ever heard of the book Paradise Lost by Milton. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I've heard of it. In, in that, that book, mm -hmm. Milton puts these words in the mouth of Satan fictitiously. Right, yes. the, the, Satan said, I would, rather, I would rather rule in hell than serve in heaven. You want to know something? He's not going to do either. No, he's not going to rule, Lord. He's not going to rule in hell. He he, God's going to keep him him. separate. But you know why? Because it says in Philippians, Philippians chapter 2, the word of God says that every knee will bow. Mm -hmm. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess. Uh, in heaven, mm -hmm. on earth, and under the earth, every knee will bow, every tongue confess, take this, you old devil, that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Hallelujah. Amen. God is faithful to his word. Yes, just, I'm going to just inject this real quick. Okay. As many or not most of you know, you know, I was hit by a, a speeding truck when we lived as missionaries down in Central America, down in Belize. Mark was down there with us. And um, one of the things that was destroyed, I was hit by a speeding truck. I was on foot. Yes. So most of me was broken. Mm -hmm. Not all of me. Yeah, Just very most of me was broken. <laughs> and one of the things that was totally broken was my knee. I mean, my knee was destroyed. My foot was up here by my head. <laughs> but I stood fast on the Word of God. Yes. And, and people would say, because after they, even after they operated me on me, they didn't do the, they just put a big cast on me in Belize, sent me off to uh, the VA hospital in Tampa, Florida. And they put a great big cast on me, but they couldn't repair it. Not, they straightened the it out. They, couldn't. they didn't in Tampa either. I mean, mm -hmm. they, they did work on it, mm -hmm. but it, it couldn't bend. So I couldn't kneel. I couldn't, I couldn't bow. Right. But for a number of years, I confessed and I said to people, the word of God says that every knee shall bow. My knee is going to bow. Well, hallelujah, my knee can now bow. I can kneel. I can kneel before the Lord God Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Amen. It's titanium, but well, it, the but point it is because God is faithful and he watches over his word to perform it. I got better news for you. When you're kneeling in front of him, it'll be renewed, brand new. Oh. New, new body. Yeah. Uh, I don't know about you, but I happen. I'm looking forward to that new body. That's so I promise you. You're wearing yours out faster yeah. than most. Yeah. So anyhow, because Satan is a dummy. Yes. He is. He is called Lord. Satan is called Lord by, in so many names and fashions by pagan religions. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. That's a fact. But he's not Lord of anything. Well, with Lord one, well, flies. yeah, with one possible exception, and Alice hit it right on the right on, hit the nail on Lord the head. Lord of the flies. Yes, because in in the first book of Kings, the Lord speaks of the devil, that false god Baal, yes. and calls him Beelzebub, and that literally means the Lord of the flies. Why do you think God Almighty calls Satan the Lord of the flies? Where do where do flies hang out? Rotting. Yeah, garbage and cow poop. Uh, well, I, I shouldn't say that, right? All poop. Yeah. So Satan, he's the Lord of that. Okay. That's what we're told. Now, let me go back, right? Put on the full armor of God mm -hmm. so that you will be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, 
but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. That's right before the, the verses we're studying. It's in Ephesians 6, chapter uh, chapter 6, verses 11 and 12. Mm-hmm. See, now, in the, be- in the beginning of Jesus' ministry on earth, right after he was baptized by John the Baptist, he was led by the Spirit of God into the wilderness, right? And after 40 days of fasting, 40 days of fasting. Right. That's a lot of days. Yeah. It's a lot of days. Mm. Satan must have figured, well, by now he's got to be hungry. He's got to be weak. Before he's got to be weak, he's got to be hungry. So Satan shows up 40 days into this wilderness experience, right? And there was a struggle. Mm. There was warfare, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. The struggle against hunger. The battle was won when Jesus spoke these words. It is written. For man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Yes. So then Satan turned the struggle to pride and said, if you're really the son of God, prove it. Show me. Throw yourself down. That battle was won when Jesus spoke these words. It is written. Man does not. Well, I mean, he said when. You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. The next test, the struggle against self-serving greed. Mm -hmm. When Satan, probably the very first prosperity preacher, Mm -hmm. showed him all the wealth, the riches, the glory of the things of this world, and said, if you bow down before me, you can have all of this. Well, that battle was won when Jesus said, go, Satan. For it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and serve him only. You can't serve God and mammon. You'll love the one and hate the other. The struggle is against sin. The battle, right? Mm -hmm. That battle was won when Jesus spoke these words hanging on a cross. Mm. Father, forgive them. Forgive them, Father. It was the word of God that won that battle. The struggle is always for us against self, right? Jesus showed us what word, his word, we should speak to win that battle. Not my will, but thy will be done. The greatest struggle was against death. Mm. Now that battle was won when the women came to the grave where Jesus had been buried following the the crucifixion. Mm -hmm. And they were met by an angel. And the angel spoke the word of God saying, he is not here. He is risen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That death was conquered. Oh, death, where is thy victory? Death, where is thy sting? Death has been conquered. It's all about the word. It is written. It is written. It is written. No debates. Mm -mm. No bombs blown up, Mm -mm. no punches thrown, no hesitation, just draw the sword. The word of God. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. 2 Corinthians 10, 3, 4. The question becomes, do you believe the word of God? Right, exactly. The word that, in, that God has written on the tablets of your heart, the love that God has poured into your heart, the spirit that resides within you as God's temple. These are, this is what gives you the strength, the power to overcome. That you might, we might be more than overcomers, more than conquerors. Until you start to resort on the natural things to take care of yourself. The word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword and piercing as far as the division of soul and spirit of both joints and marrow and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Hebrews 4, 12. The word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. Without wielding the sword, the word of God, you will be defeated. You will be defeated. If you turn to the world and the things of the world, you will be defeated. 
God spoke to the prophet Hosea and said, my people perish for a lack of knowledge because they don't know the word. They right? rejected it. People don't know because they choose not to know. Mm -hmm. So Hosea continued on to say, because you have rejected knowledge. They perish for a lack of knowledge because they've rejected it. The people of God, the children of God, us, the saints, the holy ones of God, are instructed to abide in his word, John 8, to study his word, 2 Timothy chapter 2, and to be led in everything we do by his word. Psalm 119, verse 105. Thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. He has promised to lead us in paths of righteousness. He does it by his word. And you must remember this. That sounds like a song. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Proverbs 18, 21. I was a, a wise guy that said that mm -hmm. with the wisdom of God. Solomon said that. Yes. Death and life. Mm -hmm. You choose. Remember, Satan wants us disarmed. He wants us disarmed because he's afraid of us. Right. All right. I don't know if you ever heard of Sun Tzu. Yes. He, he was a Chinese general that lived like 500 <laughs> years before Christ. And he wrote a book called The Art of War, which is still studied in military academies in many, many nations around the world to this day. And then there was uh, von Clausewitz, the German general in the, in the early 1800s, who, a student of Sun Tzu, also wrote a book called, um, let me see, On the Nature of War. These are two guys, I mean, historically, who are, are considered the best strategicians of war that ever lived, right? And they've been studied by military leaders throughout history. I want you to listen to this from von Clausewitz. The compulsory submission of the enemy to our will is the ultimate object, right? We want to bend people to our will. In order to attain this object fully, the enemy must be disarmed. Mm -hmm. Talk to anybody that's been to West Point or Annapolis or the Air Force Academy. Talk to anybody that's been to the War College in Newport. Talk to anybody you know who's foreign leaders. They will know that. You've got to try and disarm your enemy. What do they teach you in, in boot camp, in the Marine Corps? They, they teach you never let go of your weapon. weapon. Absolutely. Never, 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 ever. And never, ever. Never, ever, ever. And your weapon is the Word of God, the sword. That's right. I want to ask you a simple question. Now, this is this is purely hypothetical, but sometimes it, this rattles around in my head. Mm -hmm. Did you ever stop to think mm -hmm. that all the woman had to do in the garden mm -hmm. was to say to the serpent, yes, God did say it. Yes. And he also said that I have authority over you, you creeping serpent. Be gone. What would have happened if she said that? Be a different story. Because the tongue, the power of life and death is in the tongue. Mm -hmm. All she had to do was say, leave. He said that. Mm -hmm. That was her sword, her weapon against that serpent, but she did not. Mm -hmm. That's why it says in James 4, 7, submit therefore to God. You got to submit to God. Resist. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. It's a very simple formula. So Satan was disarmed. And it says in Colossians 2.15, when he had disarmed the rulers and authorities, this is the Lord, he made a public display of them, having triumphed over them through him, Jesus. And then in Romans 3, 24 and 25, Paul says, being justified as a gift by his grace through the redemption which is in Christ Jesus, whom God publicly displays at, displayed as a propitiation in his blood through faith. You see, Jesus was publicly displayed, mm -hmm. and his victory was publicly displayed when it was heard, he is risen. Yes. Satan was publicly displayed as being disarmed. We, on the other hand, have been armed. Jesus said, behold, I give you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will injure you. Luke 10, 19. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but divinely powerful. 2 Corinthians 10. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. The verses we're studying right yes. now. I just I want to tell you a quick story because we're going to run out of time. Years ago, I said we were down in Belize. 
Alice and I had flown up to Houston to pick up friends of ours and drive them down through Mexico because I was pretty proficient at driving the length and breadth of yeah, Mexico at times. Time. Yes. <laughs> and we were driving along, and uh, I was driving the car. We had a, their their car, an Isuzu Trooper. And we were on a lonely, long, lonely stretch going through the Yucatan Peninsula. This is back in the late 80s. And we came around a curve, and there on the road were six or seven federales. And they're blocking the road, and they're standing there with their machine guns. So I decided, let's stop rather than get shot up with machine guns. So well, we, they wanted you to stop anyway. You well, really didn't have a choice. No, they, that's what they were there for. They were yeah. stopping all. Yes. I was going to say they're stopping all the traffic. I don't know how many other cars are on the road. So the uh, the the lieutenant, there was like like I said, there was I think maybe seven guys or so. The lieutenant walked over to my window. I was driving, and he asked me. And this conversation is going on in Spanish. He said to me, "Do you have any drugs?" And I said, "No, absolutely not." He said to me, "Do you have any weapons?" And I said, "Yeah, absolutely. Same. I have." I said, "See." Si. La palabra de Dios, the word of God. And he looked at me like, because people don't tell him, yeah, yes, I have weapons. Right. So at, with, with his uh, approval, I hopped out of the car and went to the back where we had boxes of Spanish Bibles. And we took out Alice and Randy and Ellen. They got out and they gave a Bible to each one of those soldiers. And I gave one to the lieutenant. And we stood there and for 45 minutes or so shared the gospel, shared the good news of Jesus Christ with these federalities. When we left them, they had laid down their weapons on the road, not a busy road. Mm. And they were standing. I looked in the rearview mirror, and there are all these soldiers, Stay. and they're reading the Bible. Yes. Hallelujah. Our weapons were stronger than their weapons. The next day, we stopped in the village, in the city of Chedumal, over in Quintana mm. Roo, mm -hmm. before we went into Belize. And we were getting supplies and stuff before we went into, into Belize. And all of a sudden... Here come these federales, and they're running towards us. And they're all excited, and they're waving. Yeah. Yeah, they, they went on a trip that day. They went on a trip straight to the throne of God. Hallelujah. It was, it was glorious because our weapons are stronger than their weapons. Amen. We have the weapons of life. Our weapon disarmed them. Yeah. So I'm, I'm telling you, I know we've had that experience now a number of times where, you know, you go to a government building, and they say you're not allowed to bring weapons in. And I said to them, what am I supposed to do? I can't get rid of it. I carry it all over every place I go, right? Word of God. See, so now the devil is trying to level the playing field. Yeah. He is trying to get you. He can't take it from you. He has no power. He has no authority. Yeah. He has to convince you to lay it down. He has to he has to convince you to put that weapon down. All right? Well, I'm not going to have enough time to do this. We'll finish up on this next week and, and talk a little more about this as we come to a conclusion of this part of the study. Oh, yeah. We're blessed that you were with us. Yes, we are. So, Father, we just thank you, Lord God. We thank you that greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. You, Lord, that what you've called us to, you have equipped us for, Lord God, and that you have given us your word. As I said, you've poured your word, you've poured your love into our hearts. You have written your word on the tablets of our heart. Mm. We are equipped for the battle. Thank you, Lord. But, Lord, our battle is not for destruction, but for life, that we would bring those words of eternal life you, out Jesus. into the world. We praise you and thank you, Lord, that you can use the weak and foolish mm -hmm. as we are for the glory of your name. Hallelujah. Well, until next time, God bless you and goodbye. Till